Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to look at how to create this text morph animation in DaVinci Resolve. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, have a look. So let's go ahead and bring our brand new Fusion Composition clip to the Fusion page and let's bring in the text node and we're going to write our text in the text box then let's bring up the size a little bit there as well. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and create the path for our text here. So let's go to the layout tab and then under layout, we're going to change type from point to path. And at this point, we can go ahead and start to draw out the path on the viewer. And once that is done, we can also easily change all the points on the viewer from linear to smooth and also play with each individual points on the path as well to make it uh, smoother. Now, another parameter we're going to pay special attention to is position on path. This allows us to uh, change the position of the text on the path. So what we're going to do is to go to the 24th frame, uh, keyframe, and then change it to zero. And then we're going to go to 48th frame, which is about one second in my case, and then change the position to one. So this will make our text go around the entire path once and also land in that same position. We're also going to come to setting click on motion blur and play with the setting there. The blur that we're going to get from the motion blur is going to really help us later on create the shape that we need for this animation. Now, speaking of blur, let's bring in a blur node. We're going to change the blur size to around 23. So we're not, we don't want it to be not blurry enough, but also too blurry. So once that is done, we're also going to bring in a bitmap, a masking node. And we're going to primarily play with the low and high threshold. So this really depends on whether you want the darker points or the brighter points of the shape to stand out. So we're going to just bring up the low threshold up to about 0.2. And then we're going to bring the high threshold pretty much down uh, to where the low threshold is going to be. The closer these two points are, the clearer the edges around the mask are going to be. So at this point, guys, we have pretty much turned our text into a shape. We can also bring in a background node and this will allow us to change the color of the text or shape into any color that we like. The next thing we're going to work on is the morph. So let's go to blur node and let's go to the 48th frame and then we're going to keyframe blur size and then go to 60th frame and then bring blur size all the way down to zero. So this, as you can see, is going to give us that smooth shape to text morph. The next thing we're going to do is to go back to text node and then let's go to the transform tab and then go to size Y. We're going to bring down the height of the text a little bit. Uh, this, as you can see, is going to uh, kind of give it a, a leaner look uh, to the shape itself. So uh, let's come to just a few frames before uh, 48th frame uh, and then we're going to keyframe it. And then let's go to 48th frame, bring the Y parameter uh, back up to one. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, this is looking much better. Let's also go to the text tab and then play with the tracking parameter. So this controls is the space between uh, letters uh, in the text. So if we were to, let's say right now, keyframe and then bring this uh, down to about 0 0.6, this, as you can see, is actually giving us a circle. So let's go to 30th frame, bring this up, bring tracking up to about a little over one. So we're going to try to stretch it out a little bit, just a little bit. And then uh, let's go to just a few frames before uh, 48th frame. We're going to keyframe uh, tracking uh, once again. And then let's go to 48th uh, frame and keyframe tracking one last time. Bring this uh, back down to one. So guys, at this point, we've fine-tuned the shape, the look of the shape a little bit so that uh, this animation is looking a little bit better. And another thing we can do at this point is to give our shape a little bit more dimension, more texture. So let's bring in displace node and then let's also bring a fast noise node, attach it to displace. And notice how when we start to change the fast noise parameters like contrast, brightness, and also the X and Y scales, how all that is going to affect the look of the shape. So that's looking pretty cool, right? And then we can also go to the displace node itself and change up the refraction strength. Depends on how strong you want it to be, but uh, all this is to give the shape just more dimension. Uh, let's also play with, we can also play with the seeth as well as the seeth rate parameters to give it just a further, uh, some more, some additional texture uh, to the look of the shape. So 
Uh, the next thing we're going to do, guys, is to keyframe. So let's uh, go to displace, and then at the 24th uh, frame, we're going to keyframe, and then just move it one, move it back one frame, and then bring this down to zero. And then let's go to 48th uh, frame, and then keyframe refraction strength again. And then let's move over one frame, and then let's bring this down to one. So at this point, the noise pattern is only going to be applied uh, to the duration of the animation. All right, the last thing we're going to work on here is the morph of the circle itself, which is formed as a result of us changing tracking parameter in the text node. So let's copy the background node and let's paste instance. And we're going to connect the instance node back to this place as a foreground. Now let's also bring a polygon masking node and connect it to the instance node. And then in the viewer, we're going to simply right click. And in the menu, let's go to polyline. Let's go to create and then let's go ahead and select a uh, ellipse and then let's hit OK. So this will give us a circle by default. And then we're going to bring down the size. We're going to then layer this circle uh, just right on top of the existing one. We're going to make it just so just big enough so that it barely covers the circle that's underneath it. So that's looking good. And then we're going to uh, right now at the 23rd uh, frame uh, keyframe the level parameter. Now let's move over to the 24th uh, frame and let's bring this level parameter all the way down to zero. So this, as you can see, is going to give us that smooth transition from the perfect circle to the circle that's underneath it. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is to animate the perfect circle itself. So let's go to the beginning of this clip and then we're going to keyframe, right click uh, here for shape animation. Then let's go to the 15th frame. Let's keyframe uh, again. But at this point, we're going to change the shape of the circle itself a little bit. So let's go to poly, uh, polygon masking node and do that. But we can't really see the change that well because of the uh, circle that's underneath it. So uh, let's uh, go back to the text node, actually. And uh, at the 23rd uh, frame, we're going to uh, bring we're going to go to shading tab, bring the opacity setting all the way down to zero keyframe. And let's move over to 24th frame bring the opacity setting back up to one. Now to wrap this up, let's uh, go to a spline editor and then we're going to select a polyline uh, underneath a polygon masking node and then change the interpolations between the three keyframes. Uh, basically at this point, guys, we can see that uh, there is this little nice retraction that's happening with the circle and then it kind of shoots out and then finishes uh, with the uh, shape and text morph. So this is looking pretty good. Let's uh, go back to the text node and uh, let it render. Guys, this is pretty much it for this effect. There are a lot of different elements that are embedded in this animation. So I hope this tutorial helps. Hope you learned a lot from it. And as always, I will see you next time.